Boom, we're live. All right. All right. So, how's everybody doing tonight? I see all y'all are sitting around. Oh, 19 people are waiting in to go for this. All right, so let's see who... Is that a fan with too much time? Is that a fan with too much time? Dude, I have been waiting for you. How are you doing? Um... Let's see. Prophet, can underwear be heretical? Oh my God, Anonymous. Why do you ask such things? Um, the God Emperor himself, a fan with too much time. Yes, I see that. I see that. I see. All right. So, let's just go into the intro before I realized the fan was too much time was here. N n Welcome to the stream, bud. Welcome to the stream. Okay. So, first of all, um, let's go through a couple of little things first. My hat is all messed up. Look at me. Look at me. I, 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 I look like this is like, I don't know. Vital questions. You know what? A fa fan, uh, do you have Discord up? Hold on a second. Let's get him in the Discord real quick. Hold on. Let's do that. One second. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, 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 boop. I had Discord closed. Boom. There we go. Uh, d -d 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 take my hat off. No, because then you guys will make comments about me looking like Ferris Manus, okay? All right. Oh, let's <laughs> show me, show the Ferris Manus face. Iron Kiko, I notice you. Shane Clark, you're still a heretic. Boom. Boom. All right, one second. Okay, so my hat is heretical. <laughs> Uh, no Discord at the moment, not really any place for it. Man, I understand. I understand what's going on, and let me tell you, I feel for you. I'm a big, I have my own babies, and that's just, it is hard, like horrific to even contemplate. All right. I, I didn't eat Ferris. I am not that fat, okay? Anyhow, one second. There, that's all you're getting. That's it. <laughs> all right. Okay, up to 34, 34 viewers. We're ready to go. It looks like everybody, the, the, you, all the usual suspects are here. Hey, Artemis Arrow. All right. So, are you heretical, Anonymous? No, no, you're not. Fan? Um, sit back. We all love what you do. We all love what you put together here. Um, we're going to get started on this. This is episode 30, guys. Sins of the Arrogant. You guys have been waiting for this. Um, I've actually been sitting here just, you know, getting ready to go for this. Um, and basically, I am... We're, I'm just ready to go. I cannot see what's going to... Ha I cannot wait to see um, what's going to happen with Anakin... Um, the death of my boy librarian last, uh, last episode was just something else. Um, it, it happened exactly. The, now I had assumed Mace Windu would have an easier time with him, but then again, I really see everything that's going on with it. Um, now what am I looking for this episode? I want to see the Imperial Knight in action. I really do. I got a feeling we're going to see it. Hour and forty-one, uh, hour and forty-two minutes long, and you guys have been saying this is the BFG Division episode. All right, Artemis. Um, if you're Artemis, are you playing humans? And Prophet. Uh, oh, so I am going to be doing another community live stream. I just haven't figured out when. It's either going to be um, Saturday or Sunday night. And because Prophet is so cursed, what we're going to do is we're going to take a, we're going to make an actual Discord. Um, Discord area where you guys can post requests for reaction like shorts because I don't want the shorts to get all cluttered up with like when I do you know um, community live streams then we're going to have Prophet's Torture Chamber which we're going to put all the things I'm going to be like any kind of request for reaction in that channel that is going to be watched on the community live stream no longer than two minutes guys and that's pretty much it. Hello, Ferris the Manus. Are you Manus Ferris? Yeah, pretty much. All right. Everybody got the popcorn? Everybody use the bathroom. Is everybody good to go? 
Here we go. I just about closed my live stream. That would have been a good thing. All right, let's... Boom! Ayla panted, puffing strained breaths through her nose as her legs pumped beneath her, accelerated beyond natural speed. Four of the armored fanatics turned, as if sensing her approach, all three wielding melee weapons, while the fourth among them hefted a thickly decorated flamethrower. The sisters spread out as much as they could as she Round is too late for them, that. weapons raising as they screamed mindless fury and countercharged. Ayla extended her hand, crashing into the four of them with a wave of concussive force. Not a one buckled, and from among the four, the sister bearing the flamethrower seemed to suddenly wars. glow, crowned by a bright, pitiless light. The Jedi cursed under her breath, throwing another pillar of force out, but this time down into the ground at her own feet, pitching herself back just ahead of the suddenly living flames which Poured out of the woman's weapon. Jacob, I'm the glad fire you're here, bud. pursued her in the shape of angels and twin headed eagles, which writhed and rolled as they. All right, hold on. Prophet, you stop that right now! They came on, <laughs> seeking to catch her inside the pursuit of heat before Kubrick. she managed I love how to he does distance this stuff. its range. She withdrew her mind from the force around herself. Sealing herself off preemptively before the psychic sense of the being behind the flame could reach out and touch her. Already this, or things like it, had begun to happen all across the field. Turning sure victories into quagmires or outright defeats. But where Ayla had been able to break the minds of the flagging Imperial psychers before, merely by use of their own fear of the force, the same techniques were proving less than useless against these sisters of battle. Hardened. For one thing, they were not force sensitives themselves, but rather conduits to something or someone that was. Her thoughts were briefly called back to the ritual mind slavery and corrupt dark side siphoning that the Sith often used in the past to strengthen the power of a single individual. She had received limited training after becoming a Jedi Master in the recognition and disruption of such abilities. But here, her training and disruptive techniques were proving less than useless. For though the power she beheld in the sisters seemed related, in a mechanical sense, to those ancient Sith techniques, they were fundamentally different in one major way. The Sith used such powers to take from the weak and give to the strong. To join the power of many powerless persons in order for their strength to be consumed by the will of another greater master. This, this was clearly the reverse. An unfathomably powerful force wielder was joining their mind and strength to those of the imperial faith a power and technique Ayla had never even conceived of. She had come in contact with the, the presence within that power twice now, and had been forced to flash burn her mind each time. All right, hold on, stopping one second. Prophet, can you stop disturbing Fan, please, for five seconds, just don't be yourself. I'm in order to continue fighting. As such, the Jedi Master knew very little about it, aside from that just the memory Fan, I've tried exterminating this group too many times. Under its psychic weight, much as the other foul force wielding Imperial had before. Against these powers, Ayla had little recourse but to flee. Luckily, she was not on this battlefield alone, as the sisters discovered when they made to pursue her retreating form. A cascade of mortar fire flew over her head even as she threw herself back. The explosives colliding with the group of Imperials in a destructive pinpoint barrage. The metal beneath the armored feet of the sisters split and melted, breaking into pieces and forcing them down. Chunks of their ceramite armor flying free as the first cascade of clone munitions was followed by a second rain of death immediately after. 
Clawing the ground, kicking the broken earth and making headway, the three melee armed Imperials charged ahead in spite of the shells. Making a beeline for the Jedi, who had rebounded back in their direction after the second explosive volley, getting between the fanatics and the firing lines of her clone troopers. The mortars ceased their discharge as the general came close to the action again. But just as the clones dared not fire their weapons so close to their general's line of attack, so too was the flamethrower-wielding warrior choked by the sudden proximity of the other sisters to the Jedi and both sides could only watch what happened next. Against Ayla's precognitive strikes, the melee sisters wilted. The Jedi playing their frenzy against them as she stepped with azure grace and wove herself between them and their furious strikes. The halo of light around the flamethrower bearer had died away by the time she was done with the first three, mm. and Ayla led the fight towards the remaining sisters without losing a step. These four were at the tail end of a vast, retreating line of Imperial forces, who were suddenly and violently shoved back into an outright rout by the arrival of the Jedi General and the main column of her clone forces. They had advanced so far that the shining, gold and skull adorned gates of the Imperial Temple were now clearly in sight. Even so, Ayla knew she had to maintain an ironclad discipline over her pursuit, allowing the Imperials to create their openings and riding the flow of the battle into each presented vulnerability, always balancing on a knife's edge. Though unaided by the Force, each of the Imperials was easily a match for any Mandalorian warrior when it came to the tenacity and focused fury of their attacks. The flamethrower bearing sister Everybody discharged press her X to the doubt instant profit. her sisters fell, and the Jedi responded by throwing her lightsaber directly into the onrushing gout of painful death, and cutting the cone of fire which extended itself out from Ayla into two halves riding up the stream of flame before meeting the nozzle of the weapon and cutting it clean in half. Mm. The strike left a jagged, molten line of damage across the breadth of the thick, fiery weapon, its fuel spilling and burning for a couple of stilted seconds. The saber arched back through the air, landing in Ayla's palm a millisecond <laughs> before the sister and her inhuman weapon combusted. The Jedi slumped her shoulders, breathing hard and raising an aching hand to wipe grimy sweat from her head. This was the most intense fighting she had ever been a part of, and already the Jedi Master could feel herself being stretched beyond her competency. Forced to reach levels of martial prowess the Confederacy had simply never forced out of her. But, she reflected, at least they were winning. Can we just take a second to take a look at some of the artwork? Like, Kubik Karat, Karatko has done an excellent job with some of this stuff. Now, I know he does this. Um, I can't remember the program, and I'm going to I'm gonna hit myself in the head for not for remembering the program. But he's done an excellent work making this, you know, just vi making the visuals for this. He's done an excellent job. Now, as far as some of you go, you dare com compare Creamy Sheev to Zeke the Failure? Ugh. Oh. <laughs> she Night Lord simply sounds like Dark Eldar with extra steps. This is true. Let's take a look at some of this. Um, you need a Death Star blast to eliminate the Prophet. Flames won't be enough. This is very true. Uh, Austin King says this is just a snack compared to episode 31. It is going like, I'm loving this. I'm absolutely loving this. Um... Anonymous, you asked who is winning this war, the Imperium or the Republic? Now, here is where I'm standing on it. The Republic is its like any major incursion, but the Imperium simply doesn't have the numbers if the Republic goes full-on war footing. If the, Republic, if the Republic realizes, because they're very slow to realize threats, that they're in an absolute fight for their very existence, they're going to have the numbers... The same way, you know, it's going to be pretty much a situation where there are too many bodies to be flung. Because everyone would know that, um, 
every everyone in the Republic would know that what's coming is not going to in any way, shape, or form negotiate or be okay with, like, second best. They're going to be flat out. It's, it's going to be a situation where there's absolutely no choice for the Republic to go in. Now, this is just an Imperial battle group that has done this to them so far. It is. And what... Uh, I think is going to create a bigger problem is we've already seen Cornite clones. We've already seen the beginning of that. It wouldn't be a hollow victory. It would be um, it, the it, if the Republic manages to get their mind right. It wouldn't be a. It wouldn't just be a hollow victory. It wouldn't be a Furic victory. It would be a victory that crippled them for all time. Going on. Or so she believed. That belief was contested and even shattered as That's the true, buildings Ronnie. to either side of the avenue her army was marching down suddenly lit up with weapons fire. A wide ambush was suddenly sprung, and the retreating fanatics they'd been chasing wheeled about, revealing their retreat Not that to be a lethal faint. Like the two crushing pincers of a sand strike, the Imperials who had taken up positions in the flanking buildings had remained hidden and inactive allowing the Republic to overextend its advance. Once they had, these new Imperial fighters hammered into the flanks of the clone column while the sisters began to countercharge, clearly intending to ram into the front of their now assailed force with renewed vigor. Ayla had to think quickly if she wanted to rescue the front end of her column, reaching for her comm and beginning to relay orders, dodging and backtracking all the while. Aquila squad, go to the right flank with the detachment of whatever you need. Take those attack positions while I handle the ones on the left. She commanded, Jackson, looking around, stop. eyes widening as she scanned her surroundings until she spotted what she was looking for and took off at a run. Dodging shots from either side, spinning forward in the air in a cascading, rolling vault as the battle built up even more friction, the two armies colliding like storm fronts. All the while, bolts and lances of weaponized light and plasma sped past her, warming the moist afterstorm air as she threw herself high into the sky. Her leap arced up unnaturally, bolstered with a powerful exhalation of the force. She flew up into the empty air, her momentum letting her hang for a few moments as the path of her fall was intercepted at the halfway point by the straight strafing runs of an attacking wing of LAAT gunships. Seizing the rim of one of the crew hatches, she hauled herself up inside a roughed up team of clone troopers turning to face her with hidden, bewildered expressions. Spin us around! We've got to move now if we want to save the left flank! Take us in towards the Sakul Transit Center, now! She ordered, gesturing towards one of Would the Would you guys stop buildings. it? Yes, General! The commanding clone said with a salute. Jackson, I cannot believe you're the person to tell me that, and that is the first time I'm actually thinking about it. The librarian is the only Astartes that has been involved in this battle so far, and that should terrify everyone. Before contacting the pilots and informing them of their new objective. However, no sooner had the message been relayed than a sudden jarring thump shook the gunship. A moment later, the vessel soaring directly to the right banked suddenly and dove into the street below, slamming down amidst the fighting forces, its fiery body tumbling and twisting in an ocean of bodies. Hobbit, Ayla sorry, did not ignore this, looking out at the other ships in their formation and gasping at what she saw happening there. The armored Imperial fanatics had launched themselves from the battle below on jetpacks, and upon reaching the right altitude, had done much as she herself had. Across most of their fellow gunships were adhered sisters of the Imperial faith. That's a bad sign. Blazing blue power swords or fat one-handed guns clenched in each fist. Their boots seemed magnetized, and half stood on the hulls of the LAATs, firing their weapons into the ships they stood on, or oh, tearing Jesus. into the metal beneath them with their wicked melee weapons. 
Right away, Ayla realized what this could mean and stuck her head out of the cabin of the gunship looking back. Sure enough, hers had also been caught by the flying zealots and two sisters clung to the vessel. The first of them stood on the main body of the ship, her sword glowing bright blue and wreathed in lightning. The sister stalked forward, walking on the side of the ship thanks to the magnetic locks on her boots. But she was not the m This is just disturbing to even contemplate. The one thing I love the most about this series is it shows just how much of a horror show the Imperium actually is to fight. Most immediately threatening. The other sister had landed on the right hand wing, and Ayla watched helplessly as the clone within the wing turret was blasted by the two guns of the fanatic. Yeah. The explosive bullets turning him into a mess of organs, torn flesh, and shattered. That's armor. a bad day. The crazed Imperial clearly had no intention of stopping with just him, however, letting the two automatic weapons begin strafing up the length of the wing. She was stopped just short of shearing it off the gunship when Ayla's thrown lightsaber spun past the Imperial, taking her arms off with it. Hand extended, Ayla called back her lightsaber, struggling to keep track Oof. of the blue blade in order to pull it back into the speeding, shaking ship. The distraction was so great it nearly killed her. The Jedi's life narrowly avoiding its end as the clone captain behind her grabbed her roughly by the back of her vest and yanked her further into the ship. The jarring move pulled her inside and threw her onto her back just out of reach of the first sister's blade. Damn, okay. The woman having reached the lip of the hatch near Ayla and nearly beheading her shortly after. <laughs> Ayla closed her eyes, keeping a hold on her saber, now twice as hard without a visual line of sight on it. But she and her kyber crystal were strongly tied together. Especially after all that had happened to both of them in this battle, and she managed it, though, again, it took all her focus. Drawing the blade closer and closer to the flying hull of the LAAT. In that time- Look, y'all need to stop going on about 1313. My boy 1313 is my- That's my son right now, okay guys? That's my son. Um, y'all need to leave him alone. Yes, he does need a harem at this point, because my boy, you know- Let's have some good times for Cree. Come on, and he's got a Canadian. He's got a Cadian waifu. Come on. Now she might be missing some limbs, but okay, it's it's Cree. The sister pulled herself into the ship cabin, magnetized boots adhering her to the ceiling in place. Of Sandros the isn't human. It made little difference. The clones raised their weapons, shouting half-spoken war cries using. Now that is scary as shit right there. Imagine this coming for you. <laughs> as a, as Arca would say, I have come to talk to you about your cause extended warranty. <laughs> Maximum blaster settings and stun settings. Neither had the desired effects, failing to even slow the sister down as she wove her blade through them, silencing the clones seconds before turning to the Jedi who yet remained. She charged the short distance over to the ceiling of the gunship's cabin and leapt, deactivating her magnetized boots in order to land on the ground and, if possible, atop the prone alien woman. Ayla spoiled this plan by rolling to the side, throwing herself out of the gunship. For a few heart-rending instances, the Jedi Master was free of all bonds, twirling in the air, her mind only half residing in her body. Her saber came flying Prophet, I don't want you grant anybody a wish. Thank you, though. I don't want you grant anybody a wish. And her waiting hand seized it. Si Arco, why? Driving <laughs> her to the side thanks to its momentum, allowing her to reach out. She took hold of the back end of the LAAT and adhered herself there with the force. The sweat coating every inch of her. I can just imagine at this point. <laughs> Billy Mays. Hi there, Billy Mays here for Force Adhesive. ...was wicked off in the screaming wind, Leku flailing in the harsh, cold air. Warden, the ship this is wobbled no. and bounced beneath her, still afloat in spite of the damage it had taken earlier. For a moment, Ayla expected the sister to destroy the ship from within it, and thought she would be unaware of the Jedi's successful escape. 
But she was wrong on both counts. Leaping out of the cabin and catching herself on twin wings of fire, the sister twirled up and landed ahead of Ayla on the roof of the gunship, touching down while facing the Jedi. The blue alien watched mm. the boots of her foe magnetize, electrical currents visible that <laughs> bound the powered armor to the hull of the gunship, and was grudgingly impressed as the sister stalked forward, her footwork hardly impaired by it. Ayla could only hope that she proved to be just as impressive. There was a brief moment of bizarre tranquility amidst the chaos as both warriors took the measure of the other. The wind howled, the battle raged like a sea of violence around and beneath them. Yet, in that moment, none of it existed as the two warriors focused down on each other and then, moving in unison, charged. Saber plasma kissed sword blade as the two masters collided. Now, why didn't we get something like this in like an actual movie? Because this is fucking great imagery here. Rolling and striding across the back of the wavering LAAT like performers on a familiar stage. Ayla rolled her body about the narrow space, using her metaphysical bond to its hull to her full advantage altering her inertia and the push of gravity to keep her returning to the ship even as she leapt and slid across it. <laughs> without the force, the Imperial was left without any such options for maneuvering, and was made to keep at least one foot upon the ground at any given time to keep from being swept away. And yet, in spite of this impairment, she met Ayla blow for blow and strike for strike. The sheer shock of it was almost enough to drive the Jedi Master out of her flow. There's some, th yeah, Chris. There's some things I there, there there's certain scenes from this I really 100% wish were animated. The um the Magos the Magos that was basically razor blades incarnate versus the entire regiment of clones. That's one. The scene with Anakin where you know, um. Caden realized that, uh, you know, uh, shit ain't gonna be that easy. Definitely. Creamy Sheev is about to recreate the Brides of the Emperor. <laughs> Why? Um, there's a lot of scenes in this that I, oh man. Ugh. Unable to understand how this mere human woman was managing to keep up with, much less challenge her. And challenge her she did. The woman was a hammer, a furious combatant who never let up, and never staggered. It was as though this Imperial had spent vast stretches of her career fighting and killing foes who were both far more mobile than she was, and presumably just as deadly. It was as though this Imperial had spent vast stretches of her career fighting and killing foes who were both far more mobile than she was, mm -hmm. and presumably just as deadly as the burning touch of any lightsaber blade. Ayla found her offenses repelled and countered, and then, after having spent her momentum, was quickly driven into the defensive. Raising her blade in desperate delay of death, Ayla felt the advantage leaving her side. What was this strength? What was mm. this power that allowed this armed but mundane woman to Faith. defy her, where others touched by the force had not been able to. But defiant though she was, Ayla knew the answers already and it, simply fan. did not want to face them. She and the Order had been arrogant. They had come into this battle wearing robes, armed with swords and little else, and to keep up the fight like this enemy was demanding much more of her than she could bring to the floor and maintain. Exhausted down to her bones, she was seconds away from an act of desperation when the need for it was removed and the situation she was mired within deepened in its severity. The gunship had finally reached the building on their flank, flying over the roofs and walkways the Imperials occupied, raining death down into the body of the clone advance and soon up at the gunship. 
It was not long before the Jedi and Sister of Battle, currently locked in a vicious struggle, were forced apart by a sudden and wild bucking as the ship underneath them was pelted with munitions. Nice! The LAAT maintained its altitude for only seconds more before the dam- Okay, so, everyone wants to see something in artwork that I particularly enjoy. This right here, if you guys can see my mouse, this right here is when you know your day is completely screwed. It's over, it's done, that's just a bad day. Damaged wing it had been limping on gave out completely, and the ship began to free fall out of the air. The sister took off in a spiral of flame and smoke, leaving Master Ayla to her fate, a fate she fought against, running down the length of the falling ship at a full sprint. Without hesitation, she threw herself from the nose of the LAAT, spinning into the open air, arms tied against her chest as she pulled her momentum in. Around her, other gunships flew past, depositing their troops via ascension cables onto the contested roofs and access. Never mind, he's not having the bad day. This guy's having the bad day. Points. Many burning and bursting apart, naked before the vindictive return fire of the Imperial forces. Beneath the dervishing spin of the Jedi's body, the Imperial counterattack was sinking its fangs deep into the head of the Republic force. Tearing away chunks in fiery, concussive displays of fanatical aggression. All of this flowed into her overburdened mind. And all of it needed to be pushed back and away as she extended her hand, just barely catching the piped lip of one of the buildings she had come to take back. The Jedi Master groaned, dazed, hanging for a few moments. What remained of the sweat and rain dripping off her as she clung, pipe clutched in one hand, inactive saber squeezed in the other. Calling upon the Force, she hefted her- Phalus, I don't think- if the Grey Knights were in, if a Grey Knight company was in this universe, the entire Jedi Order would be wiped out to them, just flat out. Um, I think a powerful Sith could, but I think any Jedi that tried to go head to head against a Grey Knight would get it would get stomped out relatively quickly, with the exception of maybe five, and I mean five. Um, those five being Anakin, Yoda, Palpatine, um, maybe, and I mean, maybe, um, oh god, now my head is, never mind, I'm a fucking moron, um, Windu, and Dooku, those are the only five that I think could stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with a Grey Knight. But the Grey Knights are just built different. Herself up over the lip and was met with immediate attack. The Imperials she faced now were, again, a new variant she had not encountered before. Covered head to toe in metal and rubber hazmat suits. Their faces oh, hidden no. behind blocky rectangular screens. These new human beasts silently attacked voicing no words or cries in odd contrast to their kin. Though, they came on with the same determined assault as the Imperials who had come before them. A man attempted to lance and shoot her point-blank with one of their directed energy weapons, having already been standing feet from her when she hauled herself up. She sliced off the front of his gun and bisected him in the following instant. But, no sooner had his torso fallen away than that she was now facing a volley of light speed beams of deadly light. Ayla ducked, already moving before the shots had been fired, precognition barely keeping her a hair's breadth away. If Lotara Saren showed up in this universe, I would first start laughing hysterically. Secondly, I'd start crying because I'd be laughing hysterically. If Lotaro Sarin in the Conqueror showed up, good game. From death, thrusting her hand out and sending the dying soldier's fallen torso and standing legs hurtling through the air and into the dense clusters of attackers now facing her. Oh boy. This was not enough to avoid them shooting at all, however. 
And she was forced to keep moving, zipping, skating across the surface of the steel roof as the Jedi carefully danced about, continuously tangling the aiming soldiers in various crossfire positions, while throwing and pushing them with increasingly violent and unrestrained exhalations of the Force. Still, she would not have lasted more than a couple of seconds were it not for the clones who were fast coming to her yep. aid. Creating chaos as the enemy found their attentions divided between the alien menace and her army of clones. Even so, the fighting was desperate, and while the Imperials were gradually driven back, they made the clones bleed for every centimeter of metal they were forced to surrender. These cursed soldiers carried an aura about them as black as night, and they were silent, always silent. Mm. Even as they were cut down, or did the cutting down. While they were armed with the standard Imperial fare, they also had terrible weapons among them. Weapons which spat gouts mm. of what appeared to be superheated stone. Ayla had watched as, time and again, these deathly, silent soldiers had charged near certain death. A few reaching the line of the firing clones and dousing them in the horrifying, burning excretions just, produced uh, by the weapon. She had heard the dying, yeah. desperate screams of the soon immobilized clones who were the victims of these guns, who did not pass easily or quickly as the substance rapidly no. cooled and hardened around them, oh. becoming moaning, crying blocks of cover for the advance of the Imperial soldier. Welcome to the Grimdark, damn it! And yet, the true horror of her situation was not made obvious to her until after the yeah, the untouchables. had driven back the roof-bound Imperials. Now able to begin the arduous process of securing the building they stood on, and therefore, their flanks. She had stumbled to the nearby railings overlooking the battle, breathing heavily, feeling her body thrum with sore pain and growing exhaustion, and trying to rally. Instead, the sight. All right, here we go. Uh, fan says the physical feats performed by custodians are matched by a small handful of Star Wars characters. Legends Grandmaster Luke could basically stop time. Palpy could Palpy could cr create whole warp four storms alone. This is true. But you're talking a very very small amount of them that actually could do that. There sucked Legends might have a chance, yes. Uh, Starkiller might have a chance, sorry. The front lines had become a shamble, a disorganized melee which her determined forces were swiftly losing. They needed heavy armored support, and they needed it right away. Ayla's eyes scanned the column line and saw that much of her heavy support was held up in the mire of advancing troops. They were being ground to dust at that choke point. Mm. She reached for her communicator and activated it. Commanders of the main column, this is General Sakura. You need to move all your infantry forces off the main street. If you are near to the besieged flanks, then breach the base of those buildings and begin fighting your way in. Otherwise, use side roads, street alleys, and bordering buildings. Armor commanders, I need everything heavy to the front. And I need them here five minutes ago. Prioritize the Juggernaut Reserve units. Smash the enemy front and then deploy troopers to hold our gains. Hammer and hold again and again. We can win this if we hold to the plan. She sent to them. Hmm. Yes, General. Came the unified responses from the commanders. She nodded as if to reassure herself and took a step before stumbling. Ayla fell to one knee, heart beating out of control in her chest. What was happening? The sounds of the battle around her were loud, smothering, booming, and yet, and yet another sound was rising in the background, slowly devouring the noise coming from everything else. Oh boy. A clone came to her side, one of the recently deposited from the newly arriving gunships. He took her arm, attempted to help her up, but she found the strength in her legs failing faltering under her own weight as the power she had drawn into her beleaguered body was drawn from her like blood spilling out from oh, her throat. Oh no. And the sound just grew louder and louder. And where before it had been indistinct, now she could make it out all too clearly. The sound of a billion voices 
all crying out in despair, in pain, in sudden immutable terror. Uh, uh, and then Ayla sagged. General? General, are you all right? Are Did somebody order an exterminate on us? Anybody? Are you injured? Medic! Medic! Oh! The clone was calling by her side. I... I am fine. She lied, finding at last the strength to stand and rising. General, what happened? The clone asked. She shook her head, lines drawn across her face as she attempted to absorb and understand the sensations which had just run through her, through every Jedi on the planet. It was a disturbance. A great disturbance in the Force. It was as if countless voices cried out for aid, for help, and were suddenly silenced, yeah. she said. The clone tilted his head. What does it mean, General? He asked. <laughs> she did. It means that shit just got real. Did not answer him for a few moments, looking down at her hands, flexing her fingers, and then up at the sky. The clearing blew above, rapidly finding itself choked and blocked anew by bars of black smoke. Uh. It means things are moving around us, even while we are trapped here. It means we need to bring this fight to a close, sooner rather than later, she said. The trooper nodded, and together they began to march towards the other waiting troops. So here's the thing, if the Inquisition knew that the Jedi would, be, Jedi would be affected by the death of planets like this, they would seriously go in there and just start popping Xenos planets on general principle just to f fuck with Yoda while he's taking his morning shit. And then the Jedi staggered again. And then, before she could even yeah, react, I like the call was back, struck Jason. a third time. Boom! But not by anything physical. The master found herself on hands and knees, her soul sounding, resonating painfully in the wake of what she had just sensed. She saw her vision blurring for a moment, recovering more slowly this time. The medic did come, but there was little he could do to treat her, for even as Ayla recovered physically from the shock, mentally and spiritually, she remained decimated. Mm. How many echoes had she just felt? How many resounding cries followed by this horrid, freezing silence. Ayla and all the Jedi upon the planet were suddenly forced to harden themselves or succumb in maddening despair to the truth the Force had revealed to them. A proclamation echoed in the voices of uncountable billions. Mm. What they had sensed was not the final shriek of a murdered planet. It was the death cry of several worlds. The mailed fist of distant Davik Thun was tightening around the Confederacy of Independent Systems. And as its bones began to snap, the Jedi bore terrible distant witness to the end of the Clone Wars. Oh, God. Oh, shit. Oh, no! Well, that's it! That's the Clone Wars, boys! That's the Clone Wars! It's over! Yay! The Republic... Uh, the Clone Wars? <laughs> Jesus! J Jackson, this does need to happen to the towel, but I'm not here to talk about the towel and how much I hate them. Every day! The Force will not like this imbalance? No kidding. See, stuff like this is what gave rise to the Enslaver Plague. Um, yeah, D Davik Tools, uh, yeah, just, that was, yeah, that's, yeah, Geneva Condition. <laughs> Thanks, Spirit. Yeah, there is no such thing as the Geneva Convention in this place. Hey, but remember, guys, good times rhymes with war crimes. <laughs> and holy shit. <laughs> the town need to get a bigger, better, stronger sweet. No, I, I... Oh. Mace Windu. All right. So, uh, Grievous is legit the only good guy in this story. Perhaps. The town, the town need to be filleted. 
Let's just leave it like that. Um, iron, no. Violence is n violence is indeed the question. The answer is yes. Davik Toon, it's always time for war crime. The Clone Wars are over. Um, yeah. Here we go. Mace Windu. Go home, everybody. I, I'm sorry. I, I let it, let it overcome me. I'm so sorry. Deppa groaned, cradled in Windu's good arm. Shh, I understand. Please, don't speak. Save your strength. Windu implored her, maintaining his strong face. Prophet, get over it, bud. But, in truth, he was breaking inside. The battle was over. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's what you guys were talking about with BMG Vision. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that's just... Yeah, pretty much. Victory was theirs, and yet this was what they had to show for it. Jedi Master Depa Balaba lay before him, her legs torn apart at Ugh. her knees, nearly every bone in her body broken or fractured. Yes, Prophet! Yes, flay! Flay the towel! The sound of her voice was hard for him to hear. But her rattling laughter and subsequent coughs and breathing were even more terrible. <laughs> I, I cannot survive this. I'm sorry, Master Windu. You, you will have to continue the fight without me. She rasped. The wounded Jedi smiled at him. As much as she could, red dribbling from her crooked lips, her blood-filled eyes looking into his. Windu felt his face tense. Do, do not... No, Creamy, she was like, Damn it, that was my idea! Mourn me? She said softly. Rejoice! Windu nodded, recognizing this teaching of his order. I... I will. It has been an honor to know you in life, Master Depa Balaba. I will honor you and rejoice at your unity with the Force. Said Mace, finding his resolve once more. She closed her eyes and he could feel her slipping away. It took everything in him mm. to retain his dignity then as he held her, his friend fading from life in his arms. Her smile dissolved, and her bloodied eyes did not open again. Mm. Mace, she whispered, barely able to force the breaths up and out of her broken body. Yes, he said, leaning in to listen. She breathed, her spirit halfway departed, and spoke with a final, shuddering whisper. Don't tell Caleb. And with the exhalation of those last words, she did not breathe in again and passed. He held her body for a time longer before gently laying her down and standing, looking at her broken form. Was this what victory would look like from now on? Yes. Was this the face of the future? The bloody face of his friends and masters passed from life and into the Force. His simmering thoughts were drawn back and away from his ruminations when he heard the familiar voice of Master Obi-Wan Kenobi call for him. Master Windu, you are needed. Sighing through his nose, he gathered himself, and then, once sufficiently strong, turned and jogged over to where he, Jocasta Nu, and Stas Ali had gathered, which was around the wounded body of Jedi Master Jaro Tapal. Master Obi-Wan met him just before he arrived, Mace slowing to consult with him. How is he? Whispered the senior master. Not good. 
Obi-Wan admitted, Stas is doing what she can, but even she is being stretched thin at this point, and his wound is severe. He continued. Mace nodded gravely. Last words may be in order. Kenobi added in a more softly spoken whisper. I actually lost track of how many Jedi died. I really did. Um, during this battle right here. I, I lost complete track. But how many were injured is just crazy. But this is what I expected with the Jedi against the Librarian. Whisper. Master Windu paused and gave one more curt nod and then turned to face the shuddering, ailing form of Jedi Master T'Pol. He came to his side, kneeling and taking the large Jedi's hand when it was offered, clasping it tightly. Master Jocasta stood back behind them, straight as a rod and watching on, while Stas was kneeled over to Paul, bloody hands pressing to either side of the hole in his chest as she mm. attempted to heal him. Master to Paul, said Mace Windu. Ah, Master Windu. One moment, if you will. He said, pushing away Stas Ali with a burnt blunt stump of his other hand. Mm. That's enough, Ali. Save... Save your strength for those that can benefit. He said gruffly, pain constrained in every word. But I can... She started to say, but he shook hey, his Willie. head. I am done, Master Ali. Say what you will about Master Dapa Belaba. <laughs> uh, she was never. Uh, found I don't think so. With a saber strike. Go, he said to her. Stas's face tensed, but she nodded and stood up, bowing and then turning away, unable or unwilling to watch. <sighs> How. How is she? Master T'Pol asked after Master Ali had departed. Stas asked Windu. No, I mean, Bilaba. The Lasat master clarified. Windu's face threatened to grimace, but he kept himself as placid as possible. Mm. She has passed. Master Depabalaba has become one with the Force. He said, T'Pol did not hide his own grimace. Ah, damn! She... She would have been an asset. An asset in the war, or war that is coming. He growled through obvious pain. His eyes milky white. I can see it, Windu, as I lie here, so close to the end. I see so m much. We, we were arrogant, fought them, fought them like droids ah, True. like separatists the master began to say Windu watched on in stunned silence clutching his friend's hand as his death delirium began to take him then he was pulled close to Paul's large arm hauling him near the hole in his chest the Lasat speaking That's nice. to Mace's ear listen to me I can see it all so, uh, so clearly now. Uh, the that's the what the drill did to you. The Imperials and the chaos that follows. Oh no! It will swallow. Foreshadowing. Us whole if we do not. D Discard our pride. <laughs> it, it,
Artemis, you're wrong for that. You're wrong for that. You're so wrong for that. <laughs> Oh jeez, me. Oh have man, us. <laughs> oh, already. This war in the shadows. Windu tried to pull back, but was held fast by a strength the Lassant should not have been able to muster in his wounded state. What are you talking about, Master T'Pol? Mace asked stiffly. The dying master's head flopped to one side, and then the other, and his grip wavered, but then strengthened again. It is a war we have not known, but one we have been fighting all along. But there is a new war coming. It's already here in fact uh, a true war uh, to devour the secret war we are at risk master windu of being c consumed the dying master raved i know my friend i know i will safeguard the jedi order and the republic I promise, mm. said Windu. Ah! Phalius, what the hell? But, Master Windu, what if one must be uh, chosen uh, over the uh, uh, the other the alien master uh, said, weakening again. I will not let the Empire devour either. Mace assured, the dying master did something unexpected then and grinned a red grin. I... I was not speaking of... Uh, the Empire. Mm. He said but did not elaborate, releasing his grip on the master mm. and laying back more. Windu was sure this would be the last time he heard the Lassant master, but T'Pol did manage to speak one more time. I don't time. think Mace will fall to chaos. Cal... Uh, uh, my Padawan. The Lassant croaked. I will look after him. I'll make sure of it. Windu promised him. Pre pre prepare him. Uh, uh, Windu, prepare him. Uh, Tapal's just eating shrimps again. He's really? He's not ready. Uh, we. Mm-hmm. Uh, are not... ready. Mm -mm. Windu held the master's hand as he slipped away and remained for a time after. The Lots other Jedi, those who could still fight, had gathered together now, standing in a loose circle around Windu and the fallen Jedi he mourned. We are ready to move towards the bridge, said Master Jocasta New, rifle still held in her hands. No, we are not. Recover as many of our forces right. as we can. We're <laughs> pulling out of this ship, Arco. said Master Windu, his voice running over I did not spite. know that. Was it not I didn't the know plan that, Jackson. to take the ship? Asked the elderly librarian. The plan has shifted. Too much Jedi blood has been spilled. Too many yeah. of us have fallen to accomplish too little. The ship is crippled. What we have done is enough. Take our wounded and our dead and pull them back to the boarding pods. 
we are done here. Jocasta nodded, and Obi-Wan voiced no complaint. For all they knew, there was another monster like this waiting for them at the captain's chair, and they could not continue to contend with this nature of warrior, not the way they are now. The thoughts drew Mace Windu's eyes back towards the slumped corpse of the space marine they had vanquished. Still kneeling, held up by his powered <laughs> armor, the men had died still. smirking. Oh my god. Joe Casta, assemble some of the able-bodied Jedi as well. We are taking this Thank thing you, with us. We need to better understand our enemy. We need to adapt to what they are. He said, and the old woman... He's taking Saffron with him. woman nodded in stiff agreement. Okay, they're taking Saffron with them. Uh, this chat has gone as crazy as a Krieger on Vrax. Yes. Will Artemis side with the orcs? Unknown. Unknown. If Korn owns 40k and Zinch owns Warhammer, who owns Star Wars, Nurgle or Slanesh? Um, probably Slanesh. Be honest with you, considering uh, I keep on making fun of Attack of the Clones and uh, Padme Amidala, well, whatever, you know, Padme sitting there going like, "Oh, you like me? Well, you know, you shouldn't like me. And let me dress like a dominatrix right after I dress up in this thing that shows my entire back. You know, don't like me though. Get the fuck out of here." Oh, uh, here we go. Javana. Javona was pushed into the wide, steel-barred room with the rest of the aliens. She had been found in the latest purge raids, and after a thorough interrogation, one which left her without three of her fingers <laughs> and covered in bruises, they had thrown her into a confinement cell. Pat may be rubbing the griddle, yep. Food, water, or medical aid for what she could only guess was hours or days. She had been so careful until now. She had managed to stay hidden for so long. But one mistake, one bad encounter, one report on her appearance, and they had come for her. If they had not been so sure she was part of a cell or group of her kind, then they likely would have killed her right there and then. And, of course, she was. But she'd choose a million deaths before betraying her family or her kind to the death-worshipping fanatics who had taken her. Javona had shivered as she contemplated such thoughts, for she knew that they may well attempt to force her through that very trial. If they could do so without her expiring. Mm. There were so few like her left now, after all the purges and the searches and the... the space marines. She had barely avoided them. Her skin color and Stop facial features chat? had always okay. helped her pass for human much it. more easily than the rest of her family. An unrequested blessing she'd found herself relying on for her very survival. With that thought present in Appreciate her mind, that, Hobbit. she Appreciate unwove it, the loose turban she wore over her head, making her alien features more obvious to the others around her, putting them, and herself, more at ease. Hmm. Since she was still dressed in the Imperial fatigues she had stolen for her disguise. The dirty, frightened faces around her, emaciated and discolored, softened right away with the revelation. In this horrible place... Even being able to recognize your species was irrelevant. It was enough to not be human, or at least not imperial human. Hmm. Their hatred, their persecution, effectively made all who found themselves here of the same race. The door behind Javona slammed shut, making her jump and submerging her in darkness. The I mustn't creaking ever of stop. locks and seals okay. activating and sliding into place sounded from where the door had been in the blinding <laughs> Thanks, darkness, Nushu. and Javona was left blinking in shadows for almost five minutes before her eyes adjusted enough. Prophet, calm down, buddy. Calm down, bud. Yes, Prophet can't hide his shame. 
Prophet, you are not a blood drinker. You're not a flesh terror. You must... You're... you're... Okay, buddy. Okay, calm down. I thought you were the eighth. Not blood angel. Enough to allow her to see anything. The whole place was crowded, and it stank. Like her previous holding cell, there were no toilets, much less bathrooms, though the floor was coated in loose, dusty sand and plenty of worthless, discarded junk. Kitty litter! While they were not pressed shoulder to shoulder, there was clearly not enough space for all of them to lie down, even if any of them wanted to make contact with the filthy floor. She walked, running her hands along the metal bracings of the oddly mechanical textured walls. So complicated. She wondered if this room had been repurposed into a general holding cell, and if so, what had it been before? She reached an odd detail then. Yes, we need the Black Templars. A fist-sized nodule of metal, roughly round in shape and protruding three inches from the surface of the wall. She felt it out with her fingers, squinting at it. It had some sort of a hole near the top, and it almost looked like some kind of reinforced metal nozzle. A metal nozzle on a wall. She squinted uh -oh. a little harder and looked down the length of it, noticing the vague lumps proceeding further and further down at regular intervals, the same pattern repeating above her head as well. Rows and rows of nozzles? Then, a sudden sharp fear plunged into her gut, a freezing blade of revelation. Oh, she no. kneeled down, pinching some of the sand between her fingers and dabbing the digits against her tongue. Not sand. Ash. Ash. She reached down further and grabbed one of the discarded items. Not an item, but a charred bone wreathed in burnt fiber. Terror thrilled within her as she stood up. God, you're in a bad place. Up and looked around once more. This was not a holding cell. This was a death chamber. She ran as... It's not a death chamber. This is a barbecue pit. Quickly as she could, reaching the door and yanking on it, fingers closing around the steel texture and rivets. It did not budge in the slightest. But it did blast her with a near lethal amount of electrical volts, there sending her careening back against the crowd behind her. Smoking, twitching, the reason none of the others were attempting- All we need is Anakin. I hate sand. Well, you're gonna love it in here, motherfucker. Attempting to assault their way out the door seemed clear enough. Again, she had no concept Rise of how with long war to cover and stand up, but the time was given over to her as she found herself still alive by then. She waited. They all waited, Ugh. and waited, and waited. She would have thought they would get it over with quickly. Didn't the damned corpse worshippers have other people to burn to death today? <laughs> but the sadistic captain... <laughs> yeah. ...seemed content to force them all to wait for their execution within the uncomfortable, cramped space. Yeah. Soon, she began to wonder if they would all suffocate here first from breathing each other's air before finally there was the sound of a metallic thumping and clinking. She felt her bladder nearly go entirely weak at that moment, but held strong for long enough to realize it was the Special door in front of her spices. making the noise and not the walls around her. Well they were done, going to Jackson. add someone Charged. else to the room. Javona decided in that moment that she would rush the door regardless of the consequences. What was the worst they could do? Kill her? At least she would not be left waiting for death in this vile, stinking darkness. She braced herself for a run, crouching slightly. Get and ready. When the light came through, blinding her temporarily, she ran at full speed, screaming as she charged into certain death, or at least severe pain. Mm. To her surprise, her body connected with one of the armored guards, and she, as well as the Imperial, went tumbling back and against the wall. They began to struggle then, Javona punching him twice and hurting her fists on his armor as she rolled on top of him. Eyes closed, she clung to the front of his vest, in no way a fighter, at least not before now. She not expected even now. to feel the hard smacking of an elbow or rifle butt into the side of her head. But instead, she felt the light knocking of metal knuckles wrapping against her head crest. She opened her eyes then and gasped. 
Hey, I'm guessing you don't like it in there very much. Would you like to, I don't know, get out of here? Asked the clearly non-imperial soldier who lay beneath her, speaking the local language of the planet she had found herself on. A veritable waterfall of emotions fell through Javona at that point. Tears which were already on her face and- Okay, now we're playing Among Us the real game. I am completely sus of this person. Intensifying, heart thumping as hope and disbelief conjoined there. Hope is the first you, step. You are the Republic? She managed to ask through clumsy galactic basic. Well, close enough. My name's Combeer, and, uh, mm. and yours? He asked. Javona. She said, blinking tears rapidly out of her eyes. Nice to meet you, Javona. So, I hate to make any demands, especially of someone as, um, pretty as you, but, um... This guy is sus! I gotta get up and help my people finish the rescue. He said, still pinned beneath her. Javona blushed and nodded hastily, climbing back and off of him as well as rising to her feet. It was then that she noticed that they were not alone. Other men like Kambir, though dressed in an assortment of armor, were helping escort the other prisoners out of the cells. He rose, and after a while, was leading the escort that was taking them away, Javona not far behind. Okay, the corridors so... were scorched with weapons fire, and every couple of steps or turns, they would be forced to step over or trample a fallen Imperial soldier. You and these fight through the Imperium? She yeah. asked him as they went. He nodded, not looking back, still seeming wary, clearly not sure they had gotten them all on the way in. Yeah, though it wasn't as hard as you think. There were barely any of them left in the camp when we arrived. Uh, come on, this way, to the courtyards. He said, taking her hand and leading her further into the prison. Courtyards are in center of camp, no way out there. She said, and though she could not see it, Combier grinned inside his helmet. Don't worry, you'll see, he assured her. And sure enough, when he opened the hatch out into the barren courtyard, her breath was taken away. Parked across the entire space and floating, hovering on repulsor lifts above them, was a fleet of ships. Hmm. All civilian, space-worthy craft, most of which came equipped with blaster cannons, turrets, and other standard defenses. And, from the burning peeled remnants of the defense turrets and watchtowers which ringed the prison camp, it was clear that they had been used, and to great effect. Combier paused to wave everyone through and make sure no one had been left behind, ushering out prisoners into waiting ships and helping those ships take off and new ships to land when their capacity had been filled up. Javona knew that she could leave at any time from that moment, get onto any of the waiting ships that stood by. But, instead, she chose to stay near Combier, waiting for him to conclude what he was doing, intent on being on his ship by the end. Okay. She didn't have to wait too long, for Combier and the others had cleared most of the prison, only thinking to check the actual execution chambers near the end of their search for survivors. His ship was no starfighter, but not as large as some of the others that had landed. Luckily for her, as far as she was concerned, Combier had no other survivors waiting on space. And so no other prisoners joined them as she followed him up. So she got pulled out of the barbecue pit. That's... You cannot complain about getting pulled out of a barbecue pit. I don't care who you get pulled out by. The ramp to his ship. Hey, Mom, we got one passenger coming aboard. He said as they stepped inside. Who? A survivor? She asked, twisting around to look at Javona. Combier nodded and gestured back towards her. Meet Javona, he said. Javona waved, feeling uncharacteristically shy under the woman's sudden scrutiny, which ultimately settled over her alien features approvingly. Javona waved, feeling uncharacteristically shy under the woman's sudden scrutiny, which ultimately settled over her alien features approvingly. It was a novel sensation, for before now, only her own family had ever looked kindly on the small, purple ridge which crowned the center of her upper brows, or the bald, smooth expanse of her hairless head. 
the only two atypical features she bore. Good. She can man the upper turret if we get into trouble. Now, strap yourself in. I'm taking us out of here. Said Venora, turning back to her controls and beginning the takeoff sequence, engines whining and spinning up as the two others took seats behind her and did as instructed. You... you are from Axum? Javona asked Kambir, gripping the safety restraints on her chair lightly as the ship jerked and began to float up. Born and raised. What about you? He asked. No! She shook her head. Newer arrivals, me and my family. We were already running from Imperium. It had been hope that, with Axum being so big, we could escape. But it's been hard to go unnoticed. Javona admitted. No! You were already running? Where do you come from? Asked Kambir. Javona pointed up towards the sky in response. No! Was born on planet called... Yevon Primiris. It was safe place for a time. Then come Skywatchers and Imperium. They take us all away, kill any who they notice are different, burn our planet, and leave it with nothing. Normally is Look, we we have enough of this with the fucking Tau. We do not need this with these things if they're what I think they are. Kill them! Purge them in fire and move on with the day. Easy to hide, but with no. so many eyes on so few ships, she said, sorrow lacing her voice. That's... that's monstrous. Why would they do that? Kambir asked. Because you're a fucking because monster! They fear. They fear my people and beliefs. They know corpse god is lie and that our gods are true. And so they kill us to try to stop them no. coming to us. She said, They fear your gods? Who or what are your gods? Ah. Are they real things or just a belief? Kambir asked, leaning in, interested. They real. From between starfires they come. Damn it. Old and wise and true. Almost we saw them. And one was with us always. Saw him with my own eyes. They real, she insisted. Suddenly, there was beeping in the control console. And Jav Oh my god. Damn it! Jona jerked her head forward, seeing a- Remember kids, in 40k, it can always get worse. Thick, cigar-shaped ship of immense size falling through the atmosphere, though fairly distantly from them. Look alive, you two. We are getting an SOS from a large ship falling out of orbit. We may be needed for emergency help, said Venora. Javona watched as Kambir turned and looked at the controls he had access to, typing away at them for a moment. This can't be right. Mom, that's a Confederate battlecruiser. What is it doing here? He Dying. said after a moment. Let's see if we can find out. Patching them through now, she said. Static filled the cockpit speakers, making Javona clap her hands to her ears, the mm. devices buzzing and churning for a time as a distant-sounding voice slowly came into focus and replaced them. This is Ahsoka Tano, acting commander of the 501st Clone Detachment. Repeat, this is Ahsoka Tano of the Galactic Republic. We're going down and need support. Repeat, we are going down and need help angling our approach for an emergency landing. Any Republic forces, please respond! Ahsoka Tana, that's Ahsoka Tana's ship? Well, shit. Javona had considerable trouble keeping up with the rapidly spoken Galactic Basic, far more fluent in the Imperial tongue, but understood enough to know that their help was needed. She looked to her rescuers, wondering what they would do now. There was a pause then as Kambir's mother looked back at her son and he to her. Kambir nodded and she nodded back. I'll contact the- Okay, hold on a second. Now if it's gene stealers, now if it's gene stealers, then, okay, the Tyrion and High Fleet is nowhere near the Star Wars galaxy right now. The psychic signal from the gene shows would not be able to travel that far away. Now, it would depend because the timeline is different. 
but at the same time, the gene sealer could continue to spread just by good old-fashioned breeding. There's many of the other ships as are willing to help. I'll put you through to that ship in a second, said Venora, Combier taking a headset and removing his helmet, replacing it. Copy that, Ahsoka Tano. This is Combier and the Resistance Fighters of Axum. We may not be the Republic forces you're calling for, but I think we're close enough. Ships incoming to your location. Towing cables and tractor beams are prepped. If you have a particular landing location in mind, I suggest you send it to us now. W we are going back to fight? Javona asked nervously, though neither of the two answered her, which was answer enough. And if that had not made it clear, the following broadcast did. Boy, am I glad to hear a friendly voice forwarding our projected landing site. Fair warning, <laughs> resistance it. fighters. We are not done fighting, so we plan to park this wreck right on top of them. Understood? Combeer barely hesitated. Understood, Commander. Here's hoping they're grouped tight. All right. Hey, it's the Bad Batch. Okay, so, guys, I have been streaming for an hour and 20 minutes. I need to stand up and walk around for a few seconds. Prophet, you must... No, stop it. Stop it, everyone. Let's see. I mean, since Tyranids adapt based on what they consume, Jedi Sith have the whole midichlorian. Would the midichlorians rich Tyranids be the result? I don't think so, Warden. I really, really don't. Um, Prophet, we all hate Xenos. It's just the way it is. Okay, so it's 11.22 right now. I'm going to take a five-minute break just to stretch on my legs and stuff like that. I will be back, and we are going to get started back up with the Bad Batch. If Elector is born, then the Jedi are screwed. Um, yeah, I think so. Darth. <laughs> All right, guys, bathroom break, everything like that. It is 11.22 right now. I'm going to restart at 11.27. So bathroom break, get your popcorn, get all the other kind of stuff. See you in a few minutes. And I click here, here.
Boom. Boom. All right. Oh, set back and turn my heads on. There we go. All right. Green Knight versus Custodian? No. <laughs> Just no. All right, so let's scroll back up and catch some stuff. All right, guys. One thing here. Um, one thing, definitely. I have not seen this. One, 100% I have not seen this. I am experiencing this for the first time. I don't have time to watch this without you guys. I really don't. Um, but um, this is something that I'm really enjoying. So please, if something big is coming up, some sort of plot twist or something like that, like I, I knew there was going to be something about her. I didn't know exactly what. Um... But please, like, let, let me, let me get the hit, okay? It's fine, Prophet. Um, you will be forgiven by the Emperor one day. One second. Let's see. All right. Let's see. No such button. What, what's going on? Let's see. I'm back and got my iced tea. All right. So, it's 1127. Let's get going. All right, here we go. Now we're back with the Bad Batch. They've been chatting like that since they met. Crosshair graded. Yeah, and? Wrecker asked, walking alongside and just in front of the tall sniper. It's unnatural. <laughs> Crosshair hissed. ACR90. And then forward to the two who were leading their group. They were not loud and did not seem to be slowing them down. The murmur of their voices had been near constant from the moment Tech and Quo 84 had begun speaking. Crosshair had used his calm to listen in on their gabbing, but found their conversation to be all but indecipherable. <laughs> that's disgusting. And not because the two were Man, speaking that's some disgusting. other language or using a dialect or jargon that was outside his understanding. At least, for the most part. No, Crosshair could follow the words and meanings of their speech, but could not, for the life of him, locate a central theme or reasoning behind their conversation. The two appeared to be going back and forth, one delighting the other with seemingly random trivia, only barely related to the trivia that had preceded it. So, I was made to somehow create a baseline M-Wave receiver without even an iota of Temerite or to boost the signal. Quo was saying, an M-Wave receiver without... Okay, guys, I've had enough of profit, so press X to vote to douse him with Prometheum and offer him as a blood sacrifice to the Emperor. Anything to conduct that kind of wavelength. It seems to me that he was trying to cause you to fail. Tech replied. Quo nodded his head emphatically. Indeed, I also suspect that was the this case. This guy sounds way but too happy. I foiled that plan by using the battery casing itself to bolster the signal. Granted, it only worked after you let it heat up for a few minutes before using, but it was done in the end, <laughs> the droid man said proudly. Fascinating use of recombinant ideology. I myself am quite the recombinator. We performed a delicate data extraction from Raxus Prime earlier in the war. Things did not turn out exactly as planned, stranding Crosshair and I inside a Viridium mine. The brainy clone explained. Oh, Viridium! I haven't heard of that orb, but it sounds volatile. This the red robe droid man interjected. This tech Extremely. priest is way Any too happy. fire inside the tunnel risked a full-scale Viridium meltdown. I almost had to yank Crosshair's rifle out of his hands to keep him from atomizing us out of habit. And that was not all. Viridium is also <laughs> highly Thanks, absorbent, blocking out our comms and leaving us without any way to signal for help. However, I realized that with controlled detonations, I could cause a radioactive feedback loop along the seams of the mine, Tech said. And cause a signal bolstering radiation burst born on energetic ion waves. Quo completed. Precisely. Obviously, Crosshair and I were eating anti radiation supplements for the next two months after, but it got the message across. Almost deafened Hunter, in fact. 
Wrecker smirked as he marched behind them, only catching scratches of the rapidly moving topics. I don't know. I think it's kind of cute. <laughs> Tech finally made a friend who's as excited about useless stuff as he is. Wow. Said the larger clone, punctuating the words with a laugh. You won't think it's so cute if they don't take us where we need to go. Crosshair growled. Well, where else would they be taking us? Riker asked. The sniper shrugged, hidden face scowling. On a tour of the fragging ship, for starters. Mm. He grumbled. As if sensing the soft-spoken criticism, Quo turned back towards the two in the rear and indicated toward the door in the hallway not far from where they strode. Fear not, friends. Our destination lies just ahead. Don't worry about it, Mr. Wright. He said. Guys, y'all don't have to do that. I really do appreciate it, but hey, like, I I like doing this because I get the interaction with you guys. When they came close to the doors, it became obvious that they were far more reinforced than the majority of the other similar doors they had already come across. Quo approached without hesitation extending out his tendrils and interfacing with the gate's mechanisms. And then, time Don't send anger on began to, me, to tick by. First one minute, then two, I already have and then the three minutes passed, with the clones only growing antsier and antsier as they were made to wait in the hallway, weapons out and swiveling. How long is this going to take, Hunter? At this point, we might as well just serve ourselves up to the imps. Crosshair hissed. Oh, don't worry about that. It's highly unlikely they will find us now. There really shouldn't be many people wandering the ship at this point. Said Tech. What? Why? Crosshair followed up. Tech blinked, head tilting. Obviously because the warp breach alarm has been triggered. Most of the sh- Yeah, guys, I don't have, like, anything that, like, if you guys post it, I, like, my eyes are, if my eyes are in this direction, I'm, I'm watching the chat, stuff like that. I look over the artwork, I watch the chat, I listen to what's going on. I'm reading everything you guys are saying, and some of you have a lot to answer for. I've been taking notes. The Inquisition has been called. Have fun. Ship's inhabitants will be inside bunkers and warded shelters by now. If not preemptively cramming themselves inside of escape pods, Tech said. Crosshair scowled at that. Obviously. What's so obvious about any of that? What is a warp breach, and why aren't we hiding from it? And how the frag would I know any of that? Crosshair spat. Calm down, Crosshair. I simply assume that you had been listening in on me and Quo. He is quite insightful, and explained all of that several minutes ago. Though I'm still not sure what a warp tear is exactly, a bad I thing. do understand that it has to do with their FTL drives, and that it's quite dangerous. Yes. Um, let's see. When will, if we see a Titan dunk on two whole Republic Walker Battalions? Um, a Warhound Titan would dunk on any Walker that the Empire had, much less the Republic. It would be, it, it would just be an absolute dunk. Uh, fan, uh, boss man, are you familiar with the with Quo and Canon? No, I am not. I am very unfamiliar with uh, certain elements of Star Wars lore. I need to get back into it. A lot of people have said that I should watch the uh, Clone Wars cartoon series, and I'm thinking about you know if I can find some time to do it, I might be able to. Uh, let's see. Don't worry about the war breach. <laughs> worry about Taco Tuesday being on Friday. Yes. The tech priest is the clone of Belisarius Call's friend. Uh, I'm pretty sure this series is going to get a proper ending. Everything was Anakin's fault. Quo is the tech priest. Quo is the... But I don't think I have to explain why we can't go into the shelters of the Imperials right now. Tech was saying oh. before a loud, mechanical squeal cut him off, drawing all of their attentions back to the door. <laughs> Quo stepped back and away from it, the many locks creaking and cracking open as the bars around it slid back and away. Soon, the passage was clear and open before them. Tech began to move forward, but Hunter halted him with an extended hand. Hold on, Tech. I'll take point. Cover me. 
he said, eyes finding Crosshair's and giving the barest nod. Crosshair returned it and subtly angled his rifle to aim at Quo's back. Tech nodded and stood back, pistols drawn to cover Hunter as <laughs> the sergeant stalked inside past the lip of the door and looked around. A little time passed before Hunter radioed the others. I... I think you will all want to see this. Especially you, Tech. He said. Shrugging, the others filed in, Crosshair taking up the rear behind Quo as they entered into the room. The chamber was both massively large and densely packed with all manner of computers, devices, and instruments. And in the center of it all, half dismantled and clearly being studied, was the bomb itself. Mm. Whoa! Wrecker gasped excitedly. Wait, isn't that supposed to be back on Anaxis? Crosshair asked. Hunter nodded. <laughs> it is. If it's here, then... What exactly is keeping Anaxis in line under Imperial control? The sergeant wondered aloud. The threat of the bomb appears to have been enough. As long as the people believe it's still there, then it might as well be. Yes. After all, most of the power behind a bomb this large isn't in its actual detonation, but in the threat of it. Or at least, is so it would appear. The words gave Hunter a... Yeah, seriously, that's a pretty big damn threat and every jet on the planet would know that the Imperium would have no problem popping a planet right now. They would know this as fact. Devious idea. Let's put that to the test then. Tech, quote, Thanks, Prophet. We need to get is this the bomb bombshell up there than what is down the there? The two looked at each other and then at the bomb before Horror. nodding in unison. It should not be a problem, though we will need the aid of a lifter servitor. Quo 84 said. No need, Tech replied. We've got something, or rather, someone, better. He said with a smile. Wrecker stalked forward then, laughing as he put his gun away and clapped his large hands together. You bet you do. I declined this. How's it going, I'm way bud? better at lifting than Trashy ever was. The huge clone said amiably. Hey, don't talk light about Trashy. Trashy was my boy. But, Hunter... Why do we even want this thing operational? Wasn't our mission to disable it? Crosshair asked. Hunter turned and grinned. Exactly. And there isn't a bomb that's more disabled than one we've already set off. As far as I'm concerned, this ship is as good a place as any to set it off. He said. Doesn't mm. anyone here think he might have an issue with that? Crosshair asked. Declonius, you've missed some stuff. I do not want to say anything to spoil it for you if you have not watched this. Um, I don't think anything going forward is going to be using stuff that has already been established. Um, I'd watch it. I'd definitely watch it um, over. I don't think anything moving forward, I hope so, isn't going to be um, working. Guys, F once more in the chat for our dear old friend St. Trashy of the Servitors. Um, yeah. Asked, indicating towards Quo. Good night, the others looked at him as well. Catch you later, and he bud. He paused and looked behind himself before realizing he was truly the subject of their scrutiny. I have few friends on this ship, and those I do have do not plan to remain much longer. Hmm. In fact, I fully intend to depart with them before this is done. We are not far from where I need to meet them. If I aid you in this, may I be released from your escort and, as Call would say, go our separate ways? The machine man asked. Oh, no. Idea, said Crosshair. Crosshair's, Crosshair's wise. Rubbing his chin. Tech, check the work when it's all done. If it all looks right, then yeah, you can go. I don't really understand what kind of power struggle you are involved in, but if this war has taught me anything, it's that the enemy of my enemy, Hunter began to say, is my friend. That is also one of Call's sayings. No, no, no. Or at least, one I've heard him repeat ad nauseum. For what it's worth, Sergeant, I agree, said Quo. Then get to work, both of you. Crosser and I will cover the entrance. Let me know when you are done. The Sister Legantine.
Sister Legatine, Reyna Ordain, spiraled down and away from the falling heretic gunship, her jump pack sputtering and spitting flames and thrust, but doing so in weakening bursts. The packs were not meant for true, sustained flight, and she had already tested hers to the limit during her bout with the alien witch. Mm. Controlling her own fall, she burned down towards the ground at speeds which would have pulped the flesh of a normal human, colliding with the metal avenue in a shower of sh Is this BFG division time? Shimmering fragments and fire. Her armor compensated for the impact with a loud mechanical hiss. And she stood from her landing crouch all the BFG division time. Pause, seeing that the armor of the clones she had landed on had not protected their frail bodies as her blessed plate had done for her. Sword held aloft, she cut through the smoke to strike the stunned survivors of the squad she had fallen upon. First one, and then the other. But as soon as she cut down those nearest her, the spire winds blew away the smoke around her, revealing a grouped mass of 40 clones. They held grenade and missile launchers, weapons they had trained on her from the moment she saw them. She grit her teeth, her face tightening as her life once more met the razor's edge, pivoting towards the group and raising her sword. They fired. Reyna knew that she did not have enough power left in her pack to fly away and to safety, but knew also that it was not fully expended, not yet. Even now, the energy cells of her power suit's generator were helping to bolster the jump pack which was mounted over it. But. Even so, it would take her precious seconds to emulate flight once more, seconds she simply did not have. So, instead, she charged, eyes tracking the missiles and noting that they were joined by arching mortars as well. That's Munition a lot. Munition salvos set to break her apart like an egg struck with firecrackers. But while her pack lacked the power to carry her far into the air, it did have enough strength stored up to launch her forward and to the left. Nice. An action she waited until the very last second to perform, throwing herself just out of the way of the streaking projectiles. Ronnie, if the clones were regiment in 40k, they would, they would essentially be someone that would be equivalent to a regiment of renown. They would... They would be better than your stock standard average guardman, art guardsmen. I think the Cadians would beat the brakes off of them. I think the Kriegers would just bury them in their own blood. But they would be they would stand up very very well against uh, your standard guardsmen. Which curved in an attempt to follow her, but too late. The missiles collided into the street behind her, and the sudden overlapping explosions which followed as a result of the raining mortars only seemed to help Yeah, this is an amazing forward. image. And closer to the clones. They fired again, and then a third time, each time finding their weapons- I didn't really notice that was his intestines until just now. Just barely evaded by the last second rocket sprints of the sister which carried her into their number like a bullet flying into a body. Mm. The aftermath of the impact was bloody and lethal, with Reyna's voice ringing out in clear song as she lopped away limbs, bisected torsos, and divided faces and halves, oh. turning living resistance into pacified death. The clone formation broke apart around her, and those which did not flee were mercilessly shown the Emperor's peace. And soon, all that remained of that skirmish was the sister Legatine and the pile of bodies she stood atop. Looking around, she was somewhat relieved to find the battle lines falling back and away from her position as Imperial forces began to push back the Republican advance. Thanks to the sudden aid provided by their reinforcements and the flanking positions those reinforcements had chosen to take up when entering the battle, the heretical forces of endless clones had not just been stalled, but nearly decapitated. The spear of their forward assault dissolving into disorganized chaos all around her. To their credit, the enemy soldiers did not rout forming into clumps of stubborn Fan, resistance, which that. were gradually being surrounded by advancing Bastillon irregulars, 
who then took them apart until none remained standing. Mm. The Vastes had taken a brutal beating in defense of the approach to the Basilica, and despite their reputation as a more tepid, cautious force of guardsmen, they seemed more than eager to repay their losses back to the unyielding replicate warriors, showing no quarter and no lack of haste as they took back ground while simultaneously taking their lives. And now they were not alone, joined by the silent forward march of the Carcosan untouchables, most of whom passed to the left and right of the opposing forces. Those few untouchables which had arrived in the center of the field took up shock rolls. Why do floating babies exist? It's just disturbing. Hitting the forward-facing enemies hard and without consideration for personal losses. With their additions to the battle, it seemed the surprise assault and assassination-born sabotage of the Republic had finally yielded its last advantages and Imperial grit and faith was now making the difference. The thoughts were nearly enough to bring a bristling smile to her face, but the sudden trembling within the earth curtailed her joy. Her Auspex picked it up first, but it was not long before yeah, she felt it as well. Evidently, the Republic Replicate felt whatever this approaching force was as well as their groups, clumps, lines, and formations began to dissolve launching themselves into assaults all right seriously that guy is just standing with his head with his foot on alpha legionnaire head while a tentacle monster with eyes is swirling around him i don't think i'd be that calm the flanking buildings breaching and escaping into them as they vacated the wide street and then she saw them at first Reyna had thought she was witnessing the approach of large, low-flying starships, the likes of which she had seen before during their invasion. The repulsive artificial gravity technology mastered by the aliens allowed them to create other <coughs> impractical designs to fly through the air and hover at will. And she mistook the tanks for such craft, only realizing her error as it became clearer and clearer that these vessels were speeding not on cushions of air and technology, but on ten gargantuan spinning wheels. Mm. Forward forces! Incoming heretic super heavy support is inbound on the main approach! Brace for impact! Yep. She yelled through her Vox relay, metal shards crunching and screeching underfoot as she dashed to the smoking wreckage of one of the trundling, walking Republic tanks, taking cover behind it just as these new enormous tanks began to fire. Bring a brain First blade. came volleys upon volleys of missile sprays, most of which were directed into the battle lines of her fellow sisters. Thanks to her warning, many had taken no cover curse, ahead don't you of the dare. sudden assault, but for too many, the warning had not come soon enough, or the cover they had chosen was simply insufficient. But the true devastation began when the many heavy plasma particle turrets which were mounted on these behemoths began to open fire. Yay. Additional sprays of death emerged, this time in the form of wide blue blaster bolts which hammered into the Vestellan and Kokosan lines cutting them down with frightening efficiency. Those few sisters hey, found nice. themselves in the line of fire for those Azure weapons fared little better. Oof. For these weapons were clearly of a wholly different caliber than the handheld blasters the replica had been using before. Only exacerbating the matters, the huge tanks were speeding at nearly 80 miles an hour, and they did not stop Speed. when they collided with the foremost ranks of the Imperium soldiers. Well, that sucks. Reyna found herself crying out in fear and fury as one of the assault tanks drove straight over where she huddled, crushing and denting the ruined walker under five successive metallic wheels, each large enough to smash her flat. She covered her head as the walker corpse above her crinkled and bent, wow. its metal screaming under the strain, but remaining intact enough that she was still whole and not yeah, smashed juggernauts like an are insect silly. by the time the speeding, wheeled fortress had passed overhead. Those tanks took back the Republic's ground in brutal fashion. Their 
thick hull plating throwing back very nearly everything the Imperium Yeah, the Khan would ap approve of and these. And shrugging off what weapons fire managed to actually stick. When they finally stopped advancing, hatches and ramps deployed from each of the three leading vehicles, 300 fresh replicate heretics emerging from each. The troopers immediately re-engaging the stunned Imperial soldiers with alien battle cries and weapons fire. And to add dismay to Reyna's already growing rage, she felt the rumbling had not stopped even after they had arrived and looking back down the avenue, saw three more of such tanks rapidly approaching their already haphazard battle lines. A chime from her armor declared That's her bad. jump pack fully charged, and not a moment too soon. Win or lose, death or divinity, Reyna did not doubt her purpose for a second, even if she did doubt the likelihood of her success. These were monsters which threatened to turn back the loyal and the faithful, and to such monsters, she was doom incarnate. Reyna Ordain charged down the avenue, the fresh fight at her back, angling herself towards one of the approaching behemoth tanks. Missiles were fired, some even at her, and she again waited until the very last moment before activating her jump jets. Sailing high into the sky and arching down towards the command bridge of the tank she had chosen. Using every last iota of her brain power to calculate her impact point, she threw her still powered sword through the front of. <laughs> what? This is the I want to see your manager face. The vehicle and curled herself into a ball, throwing herself at full speed towards the viewing window of thick transparent steel which nice. crowned the command center. The impact jarred her, nearly tearing her left arm from her socket and numbing her right leg as her body burst into the tank in a shower of glass like and ceramite chips. The sister did not doubt that, had her sword not weakened the wide transparent viewing port, she would have done little more than collide like an insect against their windshield. Reyna tried to rise. This is definitely staggered. something a sister Servos would do. Whining and sputtering after all the abuse. The uniformed command crew of the tank blinked in utter shock at the collapsed figure which had <laughs> Don't you test Saint Karen. Shattered her way into their midst. No one doing much of anything as seconds hung suspended in the This is something a sister would do. <laughs> Let me jump back through your window. The air like frozen rain, but that pause ended as one of the commanding clones drew his sidearm and began discharging into the Imperial Warrior, his actions prompting the other officers to do the same, drawing blaster pistols and firing into her. The bolts pinged and sizzled into her splintered armor, filling her with the sense of being pelted by heavy, boiling rain which gradually superheated her shell. Even yeah, scalding man. and burning her through the seams. Discarding her reliance on mechanical muscles, she hauled herself up with a strained growl of effort, throwing herself against the nearest clone. She is grasping pissed. and pulling free her weapon, which was embedded in the floor near her. Oh, God. Sword impaling the man's chest with barely a strain, his eyes wide, mouth agape, and spewing blood as she pulled the blade out of him through the side of his punctured chest. Oh. But she was no longer looking at him finding her next target and lurching in his direction, screaming in pain as the heat within her suit began to grow near intolerable. Mm. The next man she beheaded, kicking the head into the face of another clone as she went Alistair, for the third that's, kill, that's cutting the, the arms off the next assailant, jump jets burning to fill the space with smoke as she tried to provide... Prophet, she's a very... She's a very aggressive window cleaner. Find some sort of concealment for herself. Without helmets or armor of their own, the clone officers were easy prey to her auspex, which guided her through the smoke, and to each of them in turn, even as they continued to shoot after her, following the glow of her blade to try to keep their bead. But their uniforms and side arms were a bad matchup, even for mm. a crippled sister. She slammed her elbow into the wall beside the hatch that led down into the rest of the vehicle, a blood-strewn mire stretching out behind her. 
Reyna forced Ugh. air from between her teeth, gritting them in a cage of enameled bone as she pushed through the heat, searing pain and bruises she had earned from her latest assault. <laughs> Though the command deck had seemed vacated, the tank did not stop its movement or attack. Grunting in frustration... That's one way to say it. The place has been vacated. In other words, she killed them all. <laughs> she stabbed her blade into the wall, unholstering a bolt pistol from her hip and spinning on her heel. Unloading the gun into the nearby consoles, bursting and blowing them all apart. Jesus. Yet, even this did nothing to slow or stall the Republic war machine. But she also resolved to not be slowed or stalled by this either. <laughs> she would stop this monster. Even if she had to tear out its guts from the inside. Ugh. Holstering her gun, she retrieved her sword and slammed her fist against the door control panel. It squealed open in response, revealing the white-helmed face of a trooper who was about to enter. You're about to have a bad day, buddy. <laughs> Reyna roared into his face as she pushed her blade through the stunned false man and into the replicate behind him, triggering her blade's power field to flare as she slid the sword out, bursting both of them apart. Blue. Hobbit, appreciate it. Juggernauts, crunchy shell, but soft, gooey interiors. Blaster bolts chased and collided with her through the misting gore, which coated either wall in the cramped space. I will stop this there monster. There was no room to monster. evade or maneuver in this thing, so she did not bother to try. Charging through the shots, shoulder leading the way as she tackled the troopers attempting to impede her in the narrow hallway. Reyna crushed white armor with the power of squealing, struggling servos Ugh. before turning about and lopping down with her blue sword's glowing blade. Mm. The sister Legatine discarded grace, embracing brutality as she hacked and chopped through armor and flesh, oh my striking God. the walls to either side with each attack and leaving long, melting furrows in her wake. Oh my god. A clone tackled her in return, ramming the barrel of his gun into her shoulder joint as he did, screaming as he fired. <coughs> her right shoulder seized up at this and was filled with blinding pain. She used that pain to power a head... <laughs> Arco, stop using Harry Potter names in this. ...headbutt which shoved the man back. Following that up by punching into him with her left arm, Ugh. her blade slipping from her right hand's. No, this is actually like, this is actually with the hospitaler. Yeah, this is, this is a diversion for the hospitaler. Fingers and embedding itself in the floor. Her gauntleted strike broke. Daniel, you have you have stumbled into a sister's a, a sister of battle, um, going in to complain to the management staff of a juggernaut that uh, she is offended that they scratched the paint on her car. Every rib in the man's chest, dropping him to the ground, wheezing and dying. The soldiers behind her opened fire, and she barely shielded her face from the deathly blue volley, raising her left arm to defend herself as she tried to work some kind of feeling into her right arm. Reyna was roasting alive and mm. screamed her pain and fury as she charged forward again. Ramming into the closest replique, knocking he and his brothers back and over, though she found herself falling over with them. The close range blasting devolved into a brutal grappling melee, the clones attempting to use their numbers against her. They tried to pin her down, to put their weight over her as they shoved their guns into the seams of her armor. Blaster yeah. barrels seeking to press against any part of her skin or face. But the searing pain from those attempts only fueled her <laughs> rage. <her raid. laughs> Arco. Becoming the death song of all she faced. Within the main body of the troop carrying compartment, Clones listened to the struggle occurring behind the doors which led into them. Angling blasters, listening to the hymns of death and the cries of fleeting life which almost certainly belonged to their brothers. And then, silence. They waited, braced into overlapping fields of fire, 
at least as much as the cramped confines would allow them. When the door slid open, they revealed only inky darkness. This is the lights in the corridor having been destroyed in the fight. Sergeant, one of the clones called. D did Fan actually redo the last scene? Is he about to redo the last scene from um, Rogue One with a sister of battle? Because I can see it. In response, two double fist sized cylindrical objects bounced out of the shadows, oh, landing no. at the feet of the waiting clones. Exactly, Simmy! The nearest clone began to call, but the explosives had been cooked and provided him no more time than that. They detonated, one expelling smoke and glittering, blinding flares, while the other combusted into a raining fireball of mm. burning, searing phosphor. The purifying substance spreading out like the wings of a merciless phoenix. Its avian cry carried on the sudden frantic screams oh, of the no. troopers who felt its touch. Blinded by light, smoke, and fire, they were unprepared to carry out their planned defense as the avatar of the Emperor's intolerance made itself known <laughs> to the divine instrument that was Reyna Ordain. <laughs> Minutes later, the Juggernaut would cease its offensive action, having reached its assault position before going silent. It was surrounded by fellow Juggernaut tanks who, even then, not only fired into the enemy positions, but opened their disembarkation ramps, releasing their hordes of hundreds of replicae into the front line of the battle. The troopers of the Republic had expected to see the same emerge from this tank as well, forming up for the continuing Ooh, forward good march. God. But when the ramp came down, the first thing to emerge was blood, smoke, and the diced, burnt remains of the men who had died too close to the exit. Pools of red flowed God. down as columns of black were belched out and up. The rolling trundle of a severed, still-helmed head and the awkward, downward, flopping roll of a dismembered white limb oh. were joined by the staggered, limping steps of Sister Reyna, who emerged clutching her sword in her left hand, her hair and armor thickly matted with the blood of just over 300 God, she's troopers. a beast! Smoking from every inch, one eye closed against the searing burn, Reyna turned to spitefully regard the clones who gawked at her emergence from the slain tank. Her armor hummed and strained, barely able to keep up with her desired movements now dragged after her with each plodding attempt she made to approach. All she could do was stand, unbowed, and glare at them, an omen of their futility. She could not <laughs> even raise her sword properly any longer, not even in her good arm. But she showed the surrounding enemy no fear. Instead, when they lifted their blaster bells towards her, she this is faced why I love them the with sister. a defiant, monstrous glare and roared her battle cry. I Though love it. She could not do more than just that. And yet, she needed no more than that. No more at all. It was as if her call had heralded doom itself. Oh boy. As she let loose her final cry, the steel earth around her seemed to scream back at them, expanding and bursting apart in fiery detonations which scattered the clones present with the force of surprise and deadly power. Several replicas still managed to send shots up at Reyna, which made her grunt as they seared her and impacted Ronnie, you should be both. The sisters are fucking awesome. ...it onto her chest plate, cracking the already worn down and scorched ceramide as she fell back against the ramp. The sound of battle surrounded her then, and, most notably, the squeal and sigh of mechanical legs and the deep-throated thrums of vehicle-scaled grenade launchers. A form loomed over her, and it jerked suddenly as she became aware of it, her eyes blinking rapidly to make it out. A man with a scarred face, a young man. He was in a black uniform, and, to her relief, he was clearly an Imperial soldier. Hmm. 
Reyna was so relieved, she almost did not release the sudden vice grip she had seized the man with. Having wrapped her armored left hand fingers around his throat without realizing it. She winced and let him go, and he rubbed his neck and grimaced, but reached down to help her up. Luckily, they were not alone. Several other similarly dressed men crowding around her to pull her up into their arms. Helping to support her copious weight once they managed to drag her upright. She looked around through hazy eyes as sentinel walkers it's not fought team, around them. Temporarily driving the soldiers back and away while larger munitions fired from weapons she could not see collided with the super heavy Republic tanks. That seemed to keep them occupied as they carried her away to awaiting Chimera transport. And the sister Hospitlar waiting inside. What? Hey babe! They just mentioned you! You're in the Star Wars universe fight and you didn't tell me? Don't worry about it. I'll just be here sad. What regiment? She groaned the nearest man. The man who had found her first. So, the, there's a hospitaler there and I was just taking the piss because I'm an idiot. You know this. He smiled devilishly at her, seemingly unconcerned with her nearly breaking his neck earlier. The young man was actually quite handsome, or would have been past the four raking lines which marked his whole face from one diagonal to the other. Black Arminians, 44th Obsidian God, here to do the Emperor's work, he said. And as she was carried away, she saw that he spoke truly, as the sound of crunching tank treads, booming Lehman Rust turrets, and the rumble and roar of something far deeper and far larger no. entered into her senses. Rest easy, sister. Faith and fury may sustain the fight, but our guns will end it, <laughs> he said. There was an air-shattering blast then, one which it is the, the wind blade. And screeching about them, making the hospitalar flinch back, though the black Carminians did not even twitch. Sister Reyna Ordain watched from over the soldier's shoulder as the entire head and half the body of a Republic turbo tank seemed to simply vanish. Oh my god. Rent apart by the supersonic passage of the solid shells which had sailed through it. The man was still smiling. It is Our the Bane Blade! Guts. <laughs> nice. The wall of guns. It is the Bane Blade! <laughs> if you defer, she don't succeed, use more DACA. Yes. The, it is the weakness sword. <laughs> oh, yeah. Eleven barrels of pure hell. Yes. Alright. So, that was episode 30. You guys are telling me episode 31 is now the big one, okay? The funny little space marine line, yeah. Oh, God. So, once more. Hold on a second. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. I gotta go get something real quick because she... Trying to talk to people, you just yelling. Oh man alive, you yelling. Oh yo yo. All right. Let me get back to this, and bam. All right. Whoa whoa whoa. What's going on? Huh? Wait 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 wait. Let's see. Okay good. Okay I'm back. It looks like I'm back. I'm back. Yes. Not. Okay, so for some strange reason, I'm receiving buffering issues. It's probably the storm that's going on close to here. All right, there we go. Okay, um, eventually my um, camera will be back on. Yeah, I'm starting to lose connection. Let's see. 
I'm starting to lose connection. <coughs> mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, hopefully this is going to come back. There we go. There we go. Okay, we're now, we're, now we're back. Um, how often do you copyright strike some of these videos? Fan? Fan probably gets them as much as I do. Um, it just is what it is. Um, it's one of those things. Juggernauts are about the size of AT-ATs. Yeah, but they weigh a ton. There is a delay in this. There always is. It really depends on the latency I select before I start the stream. What is the biggest tank of 40k? The Bane Blade. A variant of it, actually. Um. Oh, yeah, there is a big delay. Alright, I typically try to, um, check out what's going on but um okay hold on a second Oop. not receiving enough video to maintain stress trading as such they will experience buffering for some reason my stream settings has gone to poor so i'm going to just wrap this okay it looks like i'm starting to get better um okay finish the mission i'm going to see okay guys so I'm just going to bring this to a close because my stream is starting to suffer. I think it has something to do with everything going on. There has been a storm in the area, and I, I have been worried about that actually happening. Um, you're still waiting for the night? I'm waiting for the night, too. And to think that Bane Blade was a light tank in the Dark Age of Tech, that is actually true. That is terrifying. Um, the Malkador is pretty big, yes. What about Shadow Sword? Is that a blank? Yes, pretty much Shadow Sword is about like that. Now, they're taking Saffron's body. Um, Sisters of Battle are terrifying. Episode 31's right around the corner. So, I need to figure out what's a good time for Episode 31. Um, Artemis Era, that popped up right when I sat there and said that. Um, so let's see, it's Friday. I know people have Memorial Day plans here in the States, but I also know that a lot of people on Euro timing were really wanting, you know, really want to join in a stream. Uh, a lot of people in Europe that, um, you know, you know, want to be around stuff like that. They want to be part of this too. So I'm going to set up a time. I'm going to talk to a few people, find out. Um, I want to. I want it to be where our friends in Europe can uh, spend some time with us. Do you think the Emperor was a <laughs> was a medium walker during the Dark Age of Tech? Not the Imperator. No, I doubt it. Um, isn't there something that's just Titan weapon on tracks, uh, Mister Reich? That would be the Ordinatus. So um, I'm going to talk with a few people in Discord, find out what's a good time for people. And try to set something up to where you know our you know everybody can come in and watch it. Probably for Sunday, if not for Monday, because you know Memorial Day and stuff like that. But people are going to be barbecuing. I have to figure things out. I'll be talking with the hospitaler about it. We'll put something together. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, uh, I hope I you get that right. All right, so. That's all we have for today. Going to have a community stream uh, soon. I'm finishing up in I'm finishing up a, a, a few scripts actually, and I'm hoping to have something out and some OC for you guys. Um, maybe make make a next stream at seven eight Panther. Um, that would be some yeah definitely. Just bring just come and talk to me. I really want um, a you know you guys like blah, blah, blah. so. Um, I do have a lot of people in Europe that like to tune in for the live streams and just haven't. I do do a lot of premieres during American time zones just because it's, you know, American time zones. But I do want to do something where people in Europe can engage with me. Um, thanks, Hobbit. Sisters, Master Terminosters, Dead Jet, Jedi, and Bane Blade. Yes. Um, Anonymous, I'll catch you out. Am I continuing, am I continuing the heresy? I have already have part of that script written up for episode four of Heresy the Betrayed. The, I am going to be doing that once I finish up with a comic star story. Um, praise the Emperor and play Dawn of War 2. Have a nice night, Chazzy. 
Um, and fan, I will be, I'll have somebody let you know because I don't, um, I don't know like how to get in contact with some people. And I really like that you were here. Uh, welcome to this ridiculous community. We've been watching your stuff for quite some time now. And we're going to, um, yeah, we're going to the end together. <laughs> I can't wait to see what's next. Um, Artemis, if you like the heresy story, the uh, there is a, there is a new, um, the first episode of A Commissar's Tale is out. It is actually the story of the Commissar character that I portray in every lore video and everything like that. Um, and then as soon as I finish with the Commissar story, I'll be going back to Heresy the Betrayed. Yes, uh, Dr. Anonymous, there's two... There's two, uh, I have the lore series, which is five ish minute lore. I also have a few independent lore videos, mistakes of the emperor series. And then I, I have, um, the commissar story, which I just posted the first video of the other day and heresy the betray, which I'm going to be continuing soon. All that being said, guys, I'll let you guys know, um, when I'm going to be live streaming the next episode. Uh, I wonder how old man reacts to the Star Wars version of the God of War. Hmm. Uh, cheer. Yeah, I hope so. Um, and fan, as soon as I find out what I'm doing the next stream, please come on by, bud. Sit by and watch the insanity. I'm going to go ahead and hit in this here, and I'll catch you guys next time.